Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas-ish. We're on our way. Wow. Look at the different setting. I think, I think we're there. Let us know if the volume is good. I'm hoping it's good. I think it's good. I think we should be okay. Ms. Info, how's the levels there on the chart there? We like, we ish, we seems to be okay? So far for talking, yeah. For talking, good. Okay, awesome. Um, it's episode, what is it? 16. Holy, how did that happen? How did that happen? Episode 16, it's all Christmas today. It's all about Christmas and stuff like that. So we're going to jump right into it. I hope you're all cozy. I hope you have some kind of nog some kind of hot drink, maybe a toddy related thing, hot or otherwise. And um, <clears throat> I have my ginger ale as ever. So I hope we're looking okay. I hope we're sounding okay. Let us know in the comments. I think we're good. We're getting a thumbs up from everybody. So we've got, uh, we've got two cameras again like normal. And uh, yeah, cheers everybody. I had to start with song number one with this because it's kind of appropriate. This is from 1951. It's written by Meredith Wilson. It was originally called It's Beginning to Look Like Christmas. That's right. A couple syllables were added to the title. And there's a reference to a Grand Hotel. And we think the Grand Hotel is in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia because she was in the Grand Hotel in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia when she wrote it back in 1950. Yeah, 51 it was released. Here it is. Appropriate way to start this show. I hope you're all happy and good, and let's just have a lovely time, okay? Sing along if you'd like to. This is, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten it's glistening once again with candy canes and silver lanes aglow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in every store. But the prettiest sight you'll see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of hop along boots and a pistol that shoots is the wish of Bonnie and Ben. Dolls that will talk and will go for the walk is the hope of Janice and Jen. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. There's a tree in the Grand Hotel and one in the park as well. The sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start And the thing that'll make them ring Is the carols that you sing Right from your own heart It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten It's glistening once again With candy canes and silver lanes aglow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Toys in every store But the prettiest sight you'll see Is the holly that will be On your own front door look a lot oh these tunes are just so fun they're just so fun and just pure 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 fun pure fun um, song number two if you're in the chat say hi let us know you're there let us know where uh, where you're how you're doing if you're cozy I have a challenge for you today folks too as you're watching the show as you're watching the show Watch the fireplace. Don't pay too much attention, but watch the fireplace. And the first person that sees the loop repeat and writes loop in the, uh, in the comments there, just loop, will, will get something from me. I'll, I'll send you something. It'll be something fun. 
Okay, so we're going for a prize today. So the first person to see when the loop happens in the fire, I don't know when it is. It could be any second or it could be an hour from now. I'm not sure because it's not a real fire. I'm sure you're probably aware. It's just like, ah. uh, but yeah, anyone who sees loop, write loop in the comments there and I'll send you a thing. Song number two is, um, is a beautiful tune. This is Christmas Time is Here. This is from the uh, Peanuts special. Vince Guaraldi and Lee Mendelssohn wrote this in 1965. Now, Vince Guaraldi had written the music for this, and they knew they were having this peanut special. And the producer, uh, Lee Mendelssohn, wanted words for the tune, but they couldn't find a lyricist in time. So Lee just ended up writing the words himself. He wasn't really a lyricist, but he ended up writing the words. He said uh, he wrote them on in about 15 minutes on the back of an envelope. They were really pressed for time. They had to do some recording. So he went and wrote the lyrics to Christmas Time is Here Again. And this is the lovely sort of peanutsy sounding thing. Vince Guaraldi establishing what Christmas jazz tunes sounded like and will sound like forever. For as long as there's Christmas, you will have this Vince Guaraldi influence over the, over the chords and the voicings and stuff. It's a beautiful tune. It's a lovely little waltz in three. Here it is from 1965 and the Peanuts Christmas special. This is Christmas Time is Here. pretty. It's amazing how many of these tunes that we associate with sort of the Christmas standards are from like the 50s and 60s. A couple things in the 40s, a couple things around there, but for the most part it's a lot from the 60s and 50s. Sort of I think unfortunately when the real commercialism of Christmas started kind of kicking off 
and uh, companies realized they could they could boost their sales by sort of milking Christmas. Stan Freebird did a wonderful uh, record called Green Christmas, and all the S's are dollar signs. Back in 1954, I think it was, where he's already lamenting how the holiday uh, season has been turned into a cash uh, interesting, cash interested endeavor as opposed to a spiritual one back in the 50s. So it's really interesting. Check that out sometime. It's on YouTube. Green Christmas. Song number three is not an oldie, oldie one, but it's one of my absolute favorites. Written by um, uh, the one and only Harry Connick Jr. off of his incredible Christmas album. It's called When My Heart Finds Christmas. Get that record. It's so good. It's from 1993. Yeah, 1993. He wrote a bunch of the tunes on it, plus it's a bunch of standards that are on the regular Christmas tunes. The band is just ha happening. It's his band. It's his arrangements. He sings everything. The stuff that he writes is killer. And this is a fun sort of uh, New Orleans second line five tune that's called uh, Must Have Been, parenthetical, Old Santa Claus, which I just love this tune. So here it is from 1993. What's, oh, what's cool about this tune, uh, it changes keys four times? Four times, just four modulations. We go from, uh, we go from G to A flat to A uh, to F and then back to A again and we end in A. So it, yeah, it goes up and up and up and then down and then stays there. Really, really fun. Listen for the modulations as they happy. Here it is. Also, sing uh, Merry Ho 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 at the end because it's just fun to do. Here we go. Uh, from uh, When My Heart Finds Christmas. This is Must Have Been Old Santa Claus. It's a great story song. I think I saw Old Santa out my window Christmas Eve. My eyes were really drooping, but I really do believe. Must have been old Santa, cause I saw his big red hat And I know my mom and dad don't fly like that, no, no I know my mom and dad don't fly like that and Then I heard some footsteps in the hall outside my door The same old Christmas trick my dad had played since I was four He stands outside my bedroom singing ho 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 Because he knows I don't believe in Santa Claus, no way. He knows I don't believe in Santa Claus. I think my daddy sees me peeking from my door, but he pretends he's Santa anyway. Every year he tries to fool me, but I'm a big boy now. I don't believe in Santa or his sleigh, no way. So I went back to my bed. Up nice and tight. I stared out of my window and I looked out of the night. And then all of a sudden, through my window, I could see Santa Claus was flying, smiling at me. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I said, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, it must have been old Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, happy ho ho ho. Happy ho 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 to you. Then I heard old Rudolph telling me to come outside. He told me that old Santa wanted me to take a ride. I climbed out of my window and I jumped into his sleigh. Then Santa took me up and away. Santa took me up, up and away. He flew above the rooftops of the sleep. Town below. I saw my big red schoolhouse and the town square picture show. It was really past my bedtime, and so old Santa said, Little boys like you should be in bed. So I hollered, Ho ho ho, and I put on Santa's hat, and then he made me hold the reins for a while. We pulled up to my window, and I jumped back in my room. And I waved goodbye to Santa with a smile When I woke up Christmas morning Well, it was nice and bright My parents said my window had blown open in the night I smiled as I told them It must have been the cat And they asked me where I got my big red hat Oh yeah They asked me where I got my big red hat And I said, Santa Claus, Santa Claus in my
happy ho 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 to you. Happy ho 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 to you. Happy ho 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 to you. He played that tune on Letterman in 93, 94, somewhere around there. Oh my God, just destroyed. That band is so stupidly amazing. So stupidly amazing. Yeah. Moving on. How we doing, everybody? We okay? Sounds okay? Yes, I just asked. Looks okay? Yeah. You like? Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like my tree? Looks all right? Looks all right? Yay. Thanks for tuning in. As always, you can throw a couple bucks over there if you want. Put it in the stocking. Shove it in the stocking, as it were. And uh, song number four. Which camera are we at here, Ms. Info? Which camera? We good? Right. Song number four? I'm going to be here now. <laughs> okay. okay. Song number four. Multitasking. I got gotcha. you. Uh, this is from 1934. So I think this might be the oldest tune I'm doing tonight. I think this is the oldest one. Um, this is by Felix Bernard and uh, Richard Bernard Smith. Now I thought, oh, that's weird. Both guy, like one guy's name is Felix Bernard, the other one's Richard Bernard Smith. I was like, was something going on? Was like, that a thing? Was it like a secret thing? Well, no, it was spelled. The Bernards are spelled differently. Just total coincidence. Total coincidence. The song is Winter Wonderland, which I just love. And originally, um, R. B. Smith, Richard Bernhardt Smith, wrote these lyrics whilst he was in a, a sanatorium being treated for tuberculosis in, of all places, Scranton, PA. Just up the road here, about an hour away from here, Scranton, Pennsylvania. He was in a, he was in a uh, sanitarium in Scranton, PA, suffering. He ended up dying from tuberculosis, but not for another 10, 15 years after he wrote this. He wrote it as a romantic song, and then in the 50s, it became more of a kind of a family song, so they changed the words for the bridge in the first bridge, it's in the meadow we can build a snowman and pretend that uh, um, and pretend that he's Parson Brown. He'll say, "Are you married?" We say, "No, man." So it's like the couple's getting married. In the rewritten bridge that was meant more for families, in the meadow we can build a snowman and pretend that he's a circus clown. We'll have fun with Mr. Snowman until the other kitties knock him down. So he made it. They wanted to make it less romantic and more family oriented because you know romance is so awful. But uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so here it is. I'm going to do both verses, both bridges, because why not? Both, yeah, both bridges, because they're just fun. So here it is from 1934. Please sing along. Winter Wonderland. Here we go. Sleigh bells. Are... <laughs> there we go. There we go. Let's do this. Here we go. Here we go. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the new bird. Here to stay is the bluebird. And sing along song as we sing along. Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we can build a snowman And pretend that he is Parson Brown He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man But you can do the job when you're in town Later on we'll conspire While we dream by the fire To face our afraid Plans that we made walking in a winter wonderland. Snows, ain't it thrilling? 
when your nose gets a chillin'. We'll frolic and fray the Eskimo way, walking in a winter wonderland. I said, walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Where we are, song number cinco. Again, if you're just tuning in, hi, my name is George. This is episode 16 of 13 Songs with me, George Rob. Thank you for tuning in. I so appreciate it. I hope you're watching it. I hope you're watching with a loved one, maybe a pet, maybe a friend, maybe a lava uh, next to you and you're all cozy and comfy and singing along. Song number five is another one that's not quite a traditional tune, but I'm gonna go over this camera. It's, uh, it's uh, one of my favorite titles for a Christmas song, because you see it and you go like, what, how is that a Christmas song? The song is uh, by Irving Taylor, Dudley Brooks, and Hal Stanley from 1950. It's called, Everybody's Waiting for the Man with the Bag. And I just love the fact that someone decided to call Santa the man with the bag. It's just great. It's just great. This was uh, made super popular by K. Starr in 1951. And the thing was, was that Hal Stanley, who is a co-writer of this, was, was K. Starr's husband. So it's another one of these BS producer composer credits that solely was given to him so that he could get money off of it. But he didn't actually write the tune. Uh, Irving Taylor and Dudley Brooks wrote it. Basically, Hal just tagged on and gave it to his wife. And uh, yeah, you know for the money but it's okay it's a great tune and it's really fun and it's uh the man with the bag what what, what else are you gonna call santa i just love it so uh and it doesn't mention santa at all except in that way so here we go from 1951 the man everybody's waiting for the man with the bag <laughs> that you just pop into your mouth and and then and then go freeze your fingers as you go caroling around the town love it that was five all right we're gonna zip over to piano for a second here song number six is I think my favorite Christmas song I know I always say all these songs are my favorites 
But I think this one is actually my favorite for a number of reasons. Number one, it mentions Christmas, but there's no religiousness about it. It doesn't mention any kind of religious related thing. It's just more about the spirit and essence of what Christmas feels like. Uh, it's written by Mel Torme, which, come on, is there anyone cooler than Mel Torme? I don't think so. He and Robert Wells wrote this thing. It was written in July because they were both sweaty and hot. It was a heat wave during July of 1945. And they sat down and they wrote this song and they ended up writing the what BMI says is the most played Christmas song. Is that what they call it? The most performed. BMI, the publishing company, says this is the most performed Christmas song. Um, it's the Christmas song, sometimes called Chestnuts Roasting, but um, I love this. Mel Tremay was sitting by the pool, Robert Wells was sitting by the pool, and Robert was just trying to cool himself off, so he just starts writing phrases that he thought would cool him off. He says, I saw a spiral notepad on Wells' piano with four lines written in pencil, Torme recalled. They started Chestnuts Roasting, Jack Frost Nipping, Yuletide Carols, Folks Dressed Up Like Eskimos. Bob didn't think he was writing a song lyric. He was just trying to cool himself off. 40 minutes later, the song was written. I wrote all the music and most of the lyrics. Mel, you devil, you. I love it. Here it is, my favorite song, done most memorably, I think, by, uh, by Nat King Cole. Uh, here is my humble, humble version of it. This is the Christmas song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir Folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe will help to make the season bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh And every mother's child is going to spy To see if reindeer really know how to fly And so I'm offering this simple phrase For kids from 1 to 92 Many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you.
such a great song. Such a beautifully written, perfect song. Perfect, perfect song. The use of major sevens and then minors in the same voicing. So, so pretty, so pretty. Mel, oh, you're a master. You're a master. Oh, that was six, right? Oh, that was song six. Moving on to song number seven. I thought, okay, let's go over here. I thought um, I should do a Ukrainian song. The Ukrainian culture has a has a has a great tradition of of Christmas songs because it's basically all you had at Christmas. You know, you were you were starving in the middle of some kind of plague or some invading country was decimating, and all you had was potatoes and songs. So we focused on that a lot. So there's a, there's a lot of Ukrainian tunes. Eh, they do they they tend to be sort of dark, which is kind of weird in its own way, but they are rejoiceable. But I thought, what 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 song should I do? Which one should I do? Well. There is a song called Va Veflayemi. And, and you might not realize it, but Veflayem is Bethlehem. So it's a song about in Bethlehem. It talks about what's going on in Bethlehem. There are glad tidings. The virgin has born a son. Uh, she's placed him in the manger there next to the cattle. Uh, the eternal God does rest upon the hay. Yeah, it sounds awful in English, but you do it in Ukrainian. Oh, it's just magical and it's really lovely. So uh, I'm going to do a version of Va Veflayemi. And uh, if you know it, sing along. And if you don't know it, just kind of go, which is really fun. Here it is, a Ukrainian traditional song written by someone who's probably starving. Oh, oh, oh. 
in standard Ukrainian way, in a standard Ukrainian way, there's a, the last verse is about, uh, hey, God, keep an eye on Ukraine, because, like, you know, we're here. So, like, if you want to, you can help us out. So, you know, it's this last line. Uh, glance with a sincere eye, O son of God, on our country, on Ukraine. Just glance, just like take two seconds. If you've got two seconds, that'd be great. And we don't want to, we don't want to be a bother, but, you know, take a, take a look. So, anyway, I like that one. Above F. Flamey. Moving on, number ocho. Again, thank you for watching. I so appreciate it. I know I always say it, but I do appreciate it so, so much. And if you can, pop on over there. Throw something in the thing. Here's a song from 1948 written by Leroy Anderson. It was written as an orchestral kind of uh, confection, a little, a little fun little piece for orchestras to play. Uh, lyrics were by Mitchell Parrish, were added later. It's, of course, the unbelievably fun and cool Sleigh Ride. Now, Sleigh Ride is a, is a straightforward song until you get to the B section and the bridge, and it gets pretty wacky and crazy. There are plenty of people that cover this song that just skip those sections because the chords are weird, excuse me, and the melody is just kind of bizarre. I think, like... Uh, Gwen Stefani did a version of it. She just like skipped the cool parts. Which is like, why would you, why would you skip the cool? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Most uh, real books too, when they have it, they skip those those chord parts. So this is actually an arrangement from uh, Larry Ogden. He used to be in the in the funk band. Um, he did this arrangement. It's really fun. It's fun to play. Now, this song is personally uh, fun for me because this was the very first big band type song that I ever played drums to in the sixth grade, I believe, maybe fifth grade, sixth grade, there's the middle interlude section, which features the orchestra and goes from being kind of a fun little two feel. You know, you have it. That's the feel, you know, one, two, one, two. Well, when it goes into the, 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 the sort of B section, with, it goes into more of a big bandy swing thing and there's all these blue notes that are written into it. And that bop at the end of that thing was the very first big band hit that I ever did. And it stuck with me forever because it's... And it goes back to the two field. So, Mr. Ostrander said, you got to get that hit. you got to get that hit. you got to make it happen. So I had brushes for the first part, and then switched to sticks, and made it swing like a mofo. My little sixth grade best attempt at swinging like a mofo. And I'm still attempting to swing like a mofo. So here it is. Oh, by the way, in German, this song is called Die Schlittenfahrt. So if you want to sing along in German, feel free. Just 
holding our hand. We're running along with a song of a wintry wonderland. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy cozy are we. We're snuggled up together like birds of a feather would be. Let's take that road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for us to stay right together with you. With you. With you. Trumpets always do the, the winning at the end. You take a trumpet, you put the valves halfway down, you don't push all the way down. You just do put half, half push on the valve and you force the air through and it goes. Love it, love it. Sleigh ride, Leroy, Leroy Anderson. I love it. Okay. Everybody okay in the room there? Yes, Richard stopped in from the future to say that he likes the two cameras. Hey, Richard from the future. In Australia, all of the Christmas trees are upside down. Did you know that? They're all like this. <laughs> um, here's a tune from 1947 written by Frank Lozer. This is called What Are You Doing New Year's Eve? The thing about this that I really like is that Frank wrote this song with the idea of it being asked way in advance. Because there's the line that says, um, the first line is maybe it's much too early in the game. So the idea is it's like it's July and the person's asking, because this was also, no, this wasn't written yet, yeah. So, so, so his daughter said that her, her father who wrote the tune, Frank Loser who wrote the tune, hated it when people sang this during the holidays. Because he was like, the whole point of this song is the, is the singer is so desperate to want to reserve New Year's Eve. He's asking like, you know, in, in May, <laughs> what are you doing New Year's? That's the whole point of the song. So I'm still going to do it because I just love it. But it's uh, this idea of what are you doing New Year's Eve? I just thought it was so funny that he hated to hear it be done in December. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. Apologies. But I'm going to do it in December. Because why not? <laughs>
affections you'd receive. But in case I stand one little chance, here comes the jackpot question in advance. What are you doing? Apologies to Frank for doing it in December, but I love it. I love it. Here we are, number 10. There's a certain kind of thing about, about nomenclature. If something has to tell you what it is, it usually isn't that thing. If something in its name has to say what it is, it's usually not that thing. Like if you if you see a place that's called New York Bagel, you, you just, you, it's not. You just you pretty much know it's, that's just not happening. Now this next tune is one of those deals. It's got a thing in the title, and it's not that at all. But it's still a great song. But for some reason, it's got this word, and the word is rock. <laughs> Jingle Bell Rock, written in 1957, by Joe Beale and Jim Booth. Jingle Bell, it's not, it's not a rock song, like by any stretch. <laughs> but it's great. It's like so great. There's the, there's the riff, right? There's that, which is rock, almost, but it's just a swing tune. It's a wonderful jump swing tune. So I wanna play it just cause it's fun and I really enjoy it. And here it is. Please sing along. Let's see if I can do the riff right. <laughs> jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock Jingle bell swing and jingle bell ring Snowing and blowing bushels of fun Now the jingle hop has begun Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock Jingle bell chime in jingle time dancing and prancing in jingle bell square in the frosty air for oh, the bright time it's the right time to rock the night away jingle bell time is a swell time to go riding in a one horse sleigh lady up jingle horse pick up your feet jingle around the clock Makes you just want to do that. 
makes me want to do that. I don't know what that says about me, but there you go. Okay. Song number 11 is often played at a sort of up, fun tempo, but I think it's a little bit more romantic if you slow it down a little bit and let this song by Jules Stein and Sammy Kahn Kahn! Uh, let it let it uh, let it simmer a little bit more. I think it I think it I think it brings the mood out a little bit more, in a fun way for me anyway. Um, this is a song whose title has three exclamation points in it. Can you guess three exclamation points? And yes, the title officially has three exclamation points, and they're not in a row. The song is "Let It Snow," "Let It Snow," "Let It Snow." Three exclamation points. And I'm not going to play it up. I want to play it sort of ballady and kind of kind of sexier more romantic kind of fireside because I think that's just I think that's the thing I think that's the thing you want with this tune so here we go let's see <coughs> It's like totally different. It's 
totally different and fun. All right. Zipping through. Everybody still happy? Well, <clears throat> it just so happens, it just so happens that I've written a Christmas song. I was inspired, uh, gosh, 10 years ago, uh, somewhere like that. I wrote this song in Cambridge in Kiki's living room. I was just writing this thing and just ended up writing this tune and I was really happy with it. Uh, it's called I Don't Believe in Christmas. And uh, there's a video for it, which is filmed almost exactly in this, in this location, right where I'm sitting right now. Uh, tree, fireplace, same deal. Different, uh, different carpet, different couch, but still. <clears throat> What's fun about this tune is it starts kind of with a deceptive rhythmic thing, a three against four. So it starts with this sort of bing, dum, dum, dum. Which you can count as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But the song is actually in three, so it comes up against that thing. Dun, dun, ka, dun, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Bun, dun, ding, dun, 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 ding, dun. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you hear the bells, kind of like the chimey things, and you're like, oh, it's going to be this kind of song. And then as the, as the guitar starts playing, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, dum, dum, bum, Just a neat little trick that I thought kind of gives it that sort of Christmassy spirit. Here it is. Um, not on an official album, but written by me in 2011. Uh, I don't believe in Christmas. Every time this time of year, I wave the way we spread good cheer, and wonder if it matters one bit why we're nicer. My advice, sir, enjoy what the day brings Despite stories of kings Relish the things that you give and are given Every time this time of year I explain in ways plain and clear my relief, I have no belief in the reason for the season, but I'm one who defends if these means to these ends result in smiling friends who once were strangers. Where's the danger? I don't believe in Christmas, but I love it. a voice some don't hold dear and proudly shout despite my doubt season's greetings at family meetings and I still can enjoy like when I was a boy unwrapping every toy that I get and each one I'm giving this is living I don't believe I love it anyway The best of intentions Never equal the gifts that you got With a season so perfect I'll forgive that its reason is not Every time this time of year, I love the love both far and near, and wonder if it matters one bit why we're nicer. Just be nicer, please be nicer. Oh, 
Oh, I marfed that bridge, didn't I? Best of intentions Never equal the gifts that they got There we go <laughs> Season so perfect, I'll forgive that its reason is not. That's my most slough bridge. <laughs> Three chords in a row without the bass note in it, so yeah. We got time for one more. And I had to end with this because I just had to end with this one. This is from 1944. And for, for a standard, it's a pretty dark song. Or it used to be much darker than it ended up being. <clears throat> this is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I thought this was a perfect way to end the night. It's from a movie called Meet Me in St. Louis. It was written by Hugh Martin and Ralph Blaine. And um, uh, Judy Garland, who starred in that movie, as well as the director, they just thought it was a little bit too dark. Originally, there was a line that said... Um, Instead of let your heart be light, next year all our troubles will be out of sight. Originally it was, it may be your last, next year we may all be living in the past. This is just, what? yeah, it's dark. That's <laughs> and then there's the line, there's a line that Frank Sinatra in 1957 that he didn't like. Because uh, he, he was recording an album called A Jolly Christmas. And there's the line, until then we'll have to muddle through somehow. And Frank said... To Martin, he said, can you jolly up that line a little bit? So it ended up, he was rewrote it as hang a shining star upon the highest bow instead of until then we'll have to muddle through somehow. I like both of those lines, and I'll probably do them both. But, um, yeah, it's kind of appropriate uh, for what we're going through, all of us together. So uh, here it is. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Song number 13. Let me flip the thing. Oops. Thanks for tuning in.
faithful friends who are dear to us can't gather near with us no more. Through the years we all will be together if the fates allow. Merry Christmas, everybody. Stay safe. Be smart. Take care of each other. See you next time. Episode 17 will be in two weeks, I think. I think it'll be good. And we're going to do songs that start with a chorus. Songs that start with a chorus. Start guessing now. You know what that means. You get your verses and your choruses and your bridge. There's a number of songs. Beatles love to start songs with choruses. Songs like Help starts with a chorus. So post your guesses right now. We'll see what's happening. I'll see you in two weeks. Have the best, safest holiday you can possibly have. Thank you for tuning in. I love you all. And uh, I'll see you really soon. Okay? See you next time. Good night.